Hello, our friends. Coach and Nick here from Echo Base Network, bringing you another Star Wars wrap-up news video where we discuss the happenings of the week. Today's topics include a new cooperative Star Wars deck-building game, Tales of the Jedi receives a perfect score on Rotten Tomatoes, and speaking of animated Star Wars, Corey Burton weighs in on his role as the voice of Dooku in Tales of the Jedi. Star Wars actress Daisy Ridley has been unable to find work after the dust settled on the sequel trilogy. Actress Faye Marseille, who plays Vel in Andor, compares working on Game of Thrones and Star Wars. Another Andor actress, Adria Arjona, has reportedly signed on for more Star Wars appearances. And last, we will update you on everything we know about Ahsoka, including the villain Grand Admiral Thrawn, who many have high hopes for, including us. As always, timestamps can be found in the description below. Make sure you hit that like button and leave us a comment and subscribe to Echo Base Network. Thank you very much. In our opening news story of the day, Fantasy Flight Games is releasing a card deck building game for two players. The Minnesota-based company, known for its signature line of living card games, and their most recent hit, Marvel Champions, is coming to the Star Wars galaxy near you. The game will come in a small box including 152 cards inside. The game is built around attacking opponents' bases. This game will retail at $39.99 and will be in stores March 2023. Oh wow, the card game. I'm sure uh, board game enthusiasts and card players out there will be happy to hear about that. Mm, not really my thing, but you know, I'm sure there'll be some people out there that'll that'll like it. In our next news story, Tales of the Jedi receives a perfect score on Rotten Tomatoes. Tales of the Jedi scores have come in on Rotten Tomatoes, and this time around, critics and fans seem to be in agreement. Fans have given the series a 95% rating overall, while the 16 professional critics have all scored it as 100%. This is somewhat of a breath of fresh air, when today, more than ever before, we oftentimes see a disparity between critical and casual fan reviews. One thing is for certain. Dave Filoni knows how to make good animated Star Wars. Let us know in the comments how you enjoyed the series. So Tales of the Jedi, I was on Doomcock stream this week and we discussed the first two episodes, which were probably the worst two episodes of the series. I've not really been a huge fan of the animated stuff, but I did really enjoy Rebels. Uh, so going into Tales of the Jedi and after getting through those first two episodes, I was just like, oh, geez, is this going to get over anytime soon? Like, hurry up. Uh, but surprisingly, I actually enjoyed the later on episodes. I thought they had a lot of heart. Uh, they felt like Star Wars. And I was actually pleasantly surprised uh, by them. So 100%, no, I, it definitely has its flaws with the... Uh, some of the episodes and some of the voicing and stuff and 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 some of the animation but uh but overall i i thought some of those later episodes were were really well done i really enjoyed it as well i wouldn't score it 100 either it's not as good as clone wars season seven it's not as good as rebels to me i did yeah. really enjoy it though and i really like the format i really like the short form format uh for more storytelling and gap filling and and my biggest gripe about the series, Nick, was the ending. I thought the, the yeah. fight with Inquisitor and Ahsoka was way too fast. That's how I, I felt anyways. I 100% agree. And it was nice just having uh, our, our good buddy John Kakaza, who edited all of the episodes into one long one where we didn't have to watch the intros and credits and skip to the next sure. episode. We literally watched it from start to finish, which was nice. Yep. And speaking of animated Star Wars, Corey Burton weighs in on his role as the voice of Dooku in Tales of the Jedi. Recently, the voice of both Cad Bane and Count Dooku has sat down for an interview with io9 and revealed that he actually wanted to change the voice of Dooku when he was first approached about doing the show, saying, My thought was, let's do him like a young sort of Michael Yord, a young Shakespearean type. Forward-looking, ambitious, but, you know, positive-spirited. And so I had figured on doing a young, bright version. Sort of a new kind of version of him. Dave Filoni, upon hearing Burton's new voice for Dooku, said, Oh, no, 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 no. Just do Dooku. Our voices don't change that much from young adulthood, if at all. Just play the character. Burton went on to say, I pride myself in being a craftsman, a craft worker. And every character in every production is this team effort. Dave is a master storyteller. And, in serving that, hopefully, I am bringing that to the microphone. And it all fits together and forms something really special. Something greater than the sum of its parts. Alright, so the voice actor for Dooku. Corey uh, Burton. He did, yeah. 
he did a good job on on Cad Bane, but his Dooku voice sounds like Alan Rickman. Like when I was listening to it, I, I kept waiting for him to say, "Where are my detonators?" You know, uh, from Die Hard or something. Uh, so I wasn't a big fan of his Dooku voice, but uh, but the Cad Bane voice is is cool. I, I like it. Yep. In our next news story, Star Wars actress Daisy Ridley has been unable to find work after the dust settled on the sequel trilogy. Daisy Ridley has struggled to get work after the Star Wars sequel trilogy ended. She was in the box office bomb, Chaos Walking, and now she has two movies coming out that could bring her back to relevancy. Her first comeback movie is titled Young Woman and the Sea, which will be on Disney+. Plus. It's a biopic about Gertrude Ederly, the woman who was the first to swim across the English Channel. The second movie, titled Magpie, will be about a couple who is struggling when their daughter, an actress, is cast with a major star. The movie is being described as a thriller, and she will be co-starring with Shazid Latif. The actress told Entertainment Weekly that she had gone out on quite a few auditions, but it was like listening to crickets. At the beginning of the year, nothing was coming through, she said. I was like, oh, no one wants to employ me. And then she continued. There were actually loads of things that I auditioned for at the beginning of the year and didn't get any of them. Though we aren't fans of Ray Skywalker, we do wish Daisy Ridley the best of luck. So, yeah, you kind of got to feel bad for Daisy Ridley a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's not her far- fault that the Star Wars sequel trilogy sucked. and She did a great job. Was terrible in it. As yeah. far as her acting goes, I mean, she was fine. I, I didn't have her. no is- issue with her, but... Uh, but she is, you know, that's where people know her from, and she, and because that was her first really big major role that I've ever seen her in. Yeah, she's now been like typecast, you yes. know, as Ray, uh, which is not good for your career. Uh, you know, Harrison Ford was able to um, uh, not get stuck in that r- rut like Mark Hamill did. Uh, and either been a lot of the other Star Wars actors, and uh, but Ray, she uh, or Daisy Ridley, she's uh, you called she's her definitely Ray. typecast. <laughs> yeah, she she is, and you know I think in today's you know entertainment we see less people actually get typecasted, but it happened yeah. to her. It is happening, and I hope that she gets out of it because we really do wish her the best. I don't like the sequels; I think they're terrible, but I like Daisy Ridley, so you know we wish her yeah. the best. You know the feeling you get when watching a new show and you see an actor or actress and you're like, I know them from somewhere. Where do I know them from? Then you head over to the IMDb and find out. I had that feeling when watching the first episode of Andor. Actress Faye Marseille, who plays Vel in Andor, is also a Game of Thrones alum. You will remember her in Arya's story arc when she was living with the men with no faces. In a recent interview, Marseille reflected back on her time on Thrones and spoke about her Star Wars experience, saying, If you take all the noise out of it, I found Game of Thrones a much easier job than one would think, given that, at the time, it was just blowing up, and given the storyline I had with the character, with Maisie Williams, who was the most loved character pretty much on the show at that point, and I acted horrible to her. So that was hard, but I think I probably felt more pressure starting a new huge mammoth Star Wars TV thing in which I was going to be one of the sort of main-ish roles. Did I answer that correctly? Well, Nick, I got to tell you, overall, I do like the character of Vel uh, being portrayed by um, by Miss Marseille. Um, you know, it's not perfect. I do have my some issues but overall, I think she does a fine job. And now, you know, it's kind of interesting for the character. We just saw her in episode nine. She all, She's playing like she's the cousin of Mon Mothma. So she's definitely instrumental to the rebellion. Important character. I definitely would call her a main-ish character, the way that she referred to herself. And it's kind of refreshing seeing an actress like this being that humble about her role. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> I'm not really a fan of the character or the show. Uh, I could really take her or leave her, but uh, I mean, she's fine in it. I I really don't have a whole lot of uh, negative to say about uh, her as an actress or anything. I did like her role in Game of Thrones. Uh, I didn't even realize that 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 was the same actress, but um, once you 
started reading the article, it popped into my head, and I know remembered exactly who she was. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool that she's bounced from Game of Thrones over into the Star Wars world. Uh, I wish I liked the show better and in her character better, but uh, but yeah, she's she's doing a, a a fine job. I don't really have any issues with her. Two with great her role, two great franchises for somebody to be involved with. Pretty neat there. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of actresses on Andor, a report from Galactic Transmission states that Andor actress Adria Arjona has signed a new contract committing her to appear in future Star Wars projects. Noted industry scooper Daniel Rickman first broke the news of her reported agreement. Additionally, Arjona has reportedly signed an option to get her own show based on her Andor character, Bix Kaleen. There is currently no information regarding which future projects Arjona could appear in or what Bix's potential solo series would be about. Is this the type of character that deserves a show of her own? Is there enough interest from the fan base over her? Personally, I'd say it's not even close, but it wouldn't be the first time I was off the mark. What say you? So Andor itself isn't drawing a big enough interest. So I don't really see how a side character in this show that's not really getting a big draw would make sense. Um, I'm sure there'd probably be some people that would that would be fine with it. Uh, but from a corporate making money standpoint, I just I, I don't see anything there uh, to warrant them doing uh, uh, another story with her as the main character, you know, doing like a story arc with her. It just I, I it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I definitely agree. I just don't think that her character or or honestly, man, I don't think any character in the show warrants the type of uh, mm -hmm. draw, influence, pull to where they're gonna have they're gonna be able to have their own spinoff show. Andor yeah. basically is a spinoff show of the movie. Um, I just I just don't see this. They're really gonna have to hit some home runs with this character and this series to be able to pull something like this off. And and here's yeah. something like. You know, you were on a panel earlier today with Mr. H, and Tom from Midnight's Edge had the following to say, and I and I really enjoyed his take on this. You know, he he talked about how uh, Winter Soldier was fine being a different type of Marvel movie because mm -hmm. Marvel had earned the right and the trust of the fandom to be able to do that. Star Wars has not done this. Star no. Wars has had a few failures. They can't. Like they got to hit a home run. They got to get Star Wars right first before they start doing spinoffs and other things. And you can't exactly. just brand something with Star Wars and say it's a success anymore. Those days are over. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's almost sort of reminds me of like uh, I can't is the movie of Michael Keaton where he kept making clones of himself. Duplicity and yeah, complicity. Yeah, and each one after so many they they got worse and worse. And it's it sort of, that's how it would be. It, you know, they're doing a spinoff of a spinoff, and then they're going to do another spinoff from that spinoff. It's just going to keep degrading exactly. if they keep doing these spinoffs within spinoffs. Yep. Uh, I, I'm in 100% agreement. They got to get Star Wars right first before they can really be putting a whole lot of faith and focus in, in these spinoff shows. Yep. And in our final update of the day, we look at everything we know so far about the upcoming Disney Plus show, Ahsoka, starring Rosario Dawson. Since the show was first announced, things have been pretty quiet. We get an occasional image from the set. Rosario Dawson will make an occasional post on social media. But when is the show going to come out? Are we going to see Ahsoka and Darth Vader together? Or will it be an Anakin Skywalker flashback? Who knows? Maybe both. The show is expected to debut sometime late in 2023, as The Mandalorian will be taking the early Star Wars slot during the calendar year. The series is part of the Mandoverse, set five years after Return of the Jedi and after the season two finale of The Mandalorian. Ahsoka is out traveling the galaxy looking for Grand Admiral Thrawn. Ahsoka creator and Star Wars creative Dave Filoni spoke on the series with Vanity Fair, saying Ahsoka is a continuous story. It is definitely driving toward a goal in my mind, as opposed to being little singular adventures. That's what I want the character to be doing, and I think that's what fans want now. They have such a relationship with her. I've only recently started to understand that all those kids that watched Clone Wars are now a lot older. 
they're very excited about all the things they grew up with, as they should be. Now, speaking of Grand Admiral Thrawn, Lars Mikkelsen, voice of the character in Rebels, is rumored to have been cast for the role. He would not be the first in his family to play a role in live-action Star Wars, since his brother Mads Mikkelsen played Galen Erso in Rogue One. Star Wars leaker Christopher Mark broke the rumor on Twitter saying, Looks like Ahsoka has indeed hired Lars Mikkelsen to play Thrawn in the series, and we will have his traditional white uniform in the streaming series. Mikkelsen has been rumored for ages and previously voiced the character on Star Wars Rebels. I'm a fan of Thrawn and would love to see Lucasfilm get this character right and let him play a larger role moving forward in Star Wars. As a matter of fact, I even think it's important. Grand Admiral Thrawn, Nick. We got to have him. He's got to come. This is a huge, like, linchpin for Star Wars moving forward. We got to yeah. get it right. He can't be Smoke, Snoke. He can't be Kylo Ren. He, they got to do this right. Yeah, I hope they don't do anything stupid like, okay, he's been out here for all this time, so he's changed and he's different now. Like, no, we need to get... Yeah, we never even got him to begin with. So Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Now, I like how they portrayed him in Rebels. I was fine with him there. Uh, I like how they've portrayed him in the video games, like the TIE Fighter series that came out in the 90s. Um, so... You know, and and I was and I liked what they did with Cad Bane, bringing him from animation to live action. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think they can, I think they can get Thrawn right. It's just a question: Will they actually get him right? Um, but if I had to put a percentage on it, I think there's like a sixty-five percent chance they get Thrawn right. That, that that's kind of where I'm at right now with it you know but uh we'll know once it comes out i'm glad they got um the the voice actor to play him i think that was key uh to this role here and i'm looking forward to seeing thrawn live action man that's gonna be freaking cool me too um it, it's i'm more excited for that and the Soka show and mando season three than i think probably anything else that's coming out star wars wise at this point nothing wrong with moff gideon at all but, yeah, yeah, he was fine. But we need a villain. But he's no Thrawn. We we need a villain. Yeah. Thrawn is more than capable of being that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is exactly what Star Wars is missing right now. Mm -hmm. So so yeah. get this right. Yeah, they need their they need a Darth Vader, you know. I mean villain. definitely not like evil like vader he's totally different in terms of personality yeah. and things but 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 a big villain like that exactly you know? that has a presence um, mm -hmm, that's that's yeah. dangerous yeah you know uh i love it so bring it to us get it right and i tell you if they get thrown right it could be great for star wars moving forward and that's what we want yeah. to see that's what we want to see so yeah. anyways hey, you know here here's the interesting thing about that nick too Thrawn wasn't any part of no sequel trilogy. No, he was not. At all. No. So uh, this could get interesting, guys. More on that in the future. So anyways, yeah. as we always say here, we are you are Echo Base Network. May the force be with you. Thank you for coming by today. Hit that subscribe button, button. Go join some merch. Join us on Patreon. See you Saturday night at our weekly live show. We will see you guys on the next one. See you guys.